Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. So I decided to take the plunge and start playing about with PIC microcontrollers to see whether I could actually do my uh, mid-band modification with a PIC chip, which should be doable, but I've never used a PIC chip before. So I decided to order myself a PIC kit 4 and the only place I could find it was from DigiKey and that comes from America but giving uh, give DigiKey their due credit it was here within a couple of days so that was all good I had to pay VAT as well on top of this price which DigiKey take off but it means there's no customs charges because it's all above board so I bought myself one of these a pick kit 4 because I didn't fancy using any of the dodgy pick kit 3s that were on eBay and for this price yeah it's okay might as well use a proper one and then we've got future compatibility with MP Lab. so whilst I was at it I ordered myself some pick microcontrollers as well and uh, due to the microcontroller shortage there wasn't too many in stock and I wasn't too sure which processor to use so I decided to find one do a search so I did a search for through hole I did a search for the amount of inputs and I managed to come up with this one the pick 18f 14q40 which has got 18 IOs which should be more than enough for what we need I'm um, not sure about program memory size or any of that but considering my program I'm possibly going to be writing shouldn't be too big that shouldn't worry too much and they had these in stock and they managed to send them with the pit kit as well so I wasn't waiting for that at all so I ordered it on the bank holiday at Christmas and it was here a couple of days after by UPS which I thought was absolutely brilliant so if we have a look at the picture of the actual chip itself we have the voltage connections we have the uh, the data and clock connections for the pit kit we have the mclear vpp pin which is the programming uh, voltage pin and then we have a selection of pins that we can use as inputs outputs and various other things like external crystal oscillators and what have you I didn't want to go for the VQFN package just yet because I wanted to build everything through hole. And should I get this right and should it work, then maybe I'll move to the VQFN package. But for now, we bought through hole technology. So let's have a look at the pin allocation tables for this. So you can see that apart from ra3 which we don't need to worry about most of them can do the analog which is good and they'll all do digital as well and you can see there's um, facilities for external oscillators and what have you but we're just going to be using this chip in its simplest of forms so let's have a look at basic requirements so the chip has these very basic requirements a decoupling capacitor across uh, plus and minus and the M clear has to have this little uh, configuration of resistors and capacitors on there must be to stop it floating about because I have found that when these pins float around nasty things can happen so it requires decoupling and it requires these components on the master clear pin so the first thing we need to do is we need to blink an LED and then once we've managed to blink an LED we need to add a push button to change it to blink another LED or to change the state of an LED as soon as we've got that we've got control over the inputs and we've got control over the outputs and this project should should be easy enough so i haven't got any footage of me building the blinking led but i do have the final 
quick video of a flashing LED. I'm sure that's going to be very exciting for you. But these are the most important um, lines that we need to use in the programming. The port, the latch registers, and the data direction, and the analog selects. These are very important to what our pins actually do. So after fiddling about with Google for, for a while, I managed to get an LED blinking and I managed to get it controlled by a switch as well. And we'll just have a look at that video on here. So once we've understood how we can blink an LED, then we need to move on to how we're going to do this project. So let's go into MP Lab. Now there's a lot of learning to do in this. But basically, we need to add these configuration bits, the fuses as they're called. So these fuses are actually very important on how the processor is going to work. So if we have a look at um, configuration bits down here, these are all the configuration bits that we can use and we can change them on or off and change them to different values. And if we click on generate source code to output, it outputs it to a text file, which then we can paste into our project. So basically, just basic configuration found off um, Google. So external oscillator off, internal high frequency oscillator, one megahertz. We shouldn't need anything more than that. Um, watchdog timer should be off somewhere, wherever it is. Yeah, watchdog timer's off. Uh, brownout detection should be off as well. And we haven't put code protect on yet. Because once we do this, that's it then. The pick is locked. As far as I know anyway. And that's the way to protect your code once you've finally programmed it. Because at the moment, I think you can actually read back off the pick chip itself. So let's have a quick look at the code. So define crystal frequency 1 megahertz. Uh, this is there for delays. Should you need it, you can actually divide down from like 4 megahertz to a 4 to 1 division. So let's have a look at the important pieces. Analog select for port A, port B. So on port A, we are using two pins and port B we're using four pins that gives us the six inputs that we need that come from the channel change switch and the TRIS which is the direction control so TRIS C C has eight outputs so we can just select that that selects them all as output pins TRIS A We've done a complete mirror image of this. Tris B. Now the reason why we need to select these is that we cannot leave pins floating. They must, any unused pins must be uh, selected as an output and then pulled down. Because as I have found out to my misery, floating pins cause all sorts of strangeness. So any unused pin has to be um, selected as an output and pulled down via a 1k or a 10k resistor. Uh, the data sheet for this PIC microcontroller is an absolute must for when you're working with it because you need to know exactly what the parameters of the IC are. And you can see in one of the guidelines for getting started, unused pins 
need to be configured as an output and driven low logic state or connect to 1k up to 10k on the unused pins to drive it low so i've actually um it doesn't actually work just leaving them uh, configured as an output i did need to pull them low as well but there you can see it's a must no floating pins or else you will come you will get tripped up with this because strange things happen so let's go back to the code so now we've told it what are our analog pins and what are going to be configured as inputs and what are going to be configured as outputs so every pin is configured there uh, port b only has four so these four doesn't matter it's just these that we're worried about so let's look at the code so a while loop while bracket one bracket that just puts it into a loop and it'll just loop round quite happy with itself so if ra2 ra4 rb4 rb5 rb6 and rb7 so let's go back to the data sheet rb4 rb5 rb6 rb7 ra2 and ra4 those are our input pins that will be reading the channel change so if ra2 is high and the rest are low we're going to data latch now this is a way of latching one command to latch all the out uh, all the eight output latches so as per the 7132 data sheet pin one apart from one zero are all ones which corresponds to that now this is actually backwards so this is the, the first bit and this is the last bit so this will be pin one and this is pin eight and i put myself a reminder on each one of those because when i typed it in you had to type it in backwards and once you got that working it's just a case of rinse and repeat for the other 40 channels so if if it doesn't see any of those it moves down to the next one if ra2 is 0 ra4 is 1 then this is the code for channel 2 on the 7132 and so on and so on now i'd still left originally i'd still left part of my code in there which had a delay and this was bad this was very bad because when i first tried it i was getting all sorts of weird noises and it was bizarre so i put it on the scope and you can actually see the um on the scope a big square wave where the delays were kicking in so i had to take all the delays out which was good because they weren't needed anyway but don't use delays because it makes a mess and also i had it latching turning off um, the latch as well which wasn't needed but that was just learning curve but this now is the refined code for it and this works an absolute treat so the code is simple it's really really simple the hard part is getting the pro the actual microprocessor to work in real life and before we forget we're using 22 percent program code with this as well which basically is just 40 times the same statement using the truth tables from um, the 7132 and the 7136 and just 40 if statements trapped in a while loop and that is it nice and simple so we wrote this to a pick chip and this is what happened 
So originally I tried to build it on breadboard, which kind of worked to start off with, but due to the connections being bad, I was getting all sorts of weirdness going on and I'd run out of space to put pull down resistors which was causing even more strange capacitive effects when you put your fingers close by. So I decided to bite the bullet and I made my own board with decent connections. So here it is. It's got its own onboard supply. It's got input pins that we can select and it's got LEDs for the output and all the necessary pull down resistors. I know I should have used a ZIF socket, but I didn't have one, but this I'll have to do. So you can see just by shorting the pins, we're actually um, putting a positive voltage onto them. You can see we're changing the code there. Now I'm actually monitoring the current on my ammeter because if you leave the if you leave the pins floating, some of the pins draw excessive current. And at one time I was drawing near enough 400 milliamps through the chip. It got quite hot. So here's my interface board that I'll be testing this out in the actual radio. Using one of my Arduino boards. But just with a piece of Vero board strapped to it. This is the first part of it. So here we have the final board for testing. With all its necessary pull up and pull down um, resistors. Um, I've also uh, located the band, uh, uh, the band switch a little bit better because the wires were getting a bit brittle. But as you can see, it's a lot of wires, a lot of jumpers going on there. But it does work. So let's do some tests. See what it can do. So we've got our frequency counter connected up. We've got multimeter checking the VCO as you can see the frequency counter is not that clear but it does show that I should be channel 1 uh, UK FM and we receive it as well Should be channel 40 UK FM. Frequency is a bit low, but we can fix that. Transmitting and receiving nicely. Let's flick it down onto the EU band. So it's on 403, it's a little bit low. That should be channel 40. Move it down onto channel 1. Twenty six nine six three. A little bit low but that could be fixed. But essentially it's operational. And it works. And I've tested all the 40 channels. And they are all on frequency and working correctly. One well, minor recheck. Cheers, very cool, are you? Stop all, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Yeah, you're $20. Yeah, not doing too bad yourself into the same side. Dodger. Cheers, bro. Dodger, dodger. So as you can hear by that quick on-air test, everything's operational. So what's next for this project now? Now we need to redesign this board now to take the pick chip instead of the Arduino so that's going to be the next step for this project but in the meantime we have a, another rework of this Arduino board coming with a few modifications that if they work we can add to this board as well so stay tuned for that but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.